if you have an idea, only one idea, and it's the basket you put all of your eggs into, you're actually not an artist, you're not a creative. The song that you wrote three years ago is three years ago. Put it out there, do the work, continually to get better and do what is in front of you that you can do for your creative passion, for what it is that makes you feel alive, for sharing the work that you have created with whoever you can get it out to, and then go make more of it. Welcome to the podcast, Tapping Creativity, with myself, Matthew C. Temple. And each week, we're going to dive into questions and issues and inspiration around creativity and the creative process. I've had a couple of questions come up lately from sort of multi-hyphenates, people who have a lot of different interests or expertise. Um, You know, I am a musician and a songwriter and a recording artist and a educator and, you know, a music historian and I want to sort of, you know, use my understanding of of music to bring people together. Uh, I want to start an arts center and all these different things and Having so many different things can be paralyzing. And now, even when we kind of break it down, um, if you are a a musician or a musical artist, there's so many things that kind of get piled on that we're expected to do, right? Uh, First of all, you need to write your songs. You need to record your songs. You need to do a music video. You got to get your music out there. You have to find a publisher. Hopefully, if you can, you can find a record label, find someone to record it once you've recorded it, or rather before you record it. Do you have somebody who, you know, an engineer or a producer who can help you do that? And then it's being on social media, building a website, uh, getting your work out there. Is it going to go up on SoundCloud? Do you put your videos on YouTube, before you have any real following, what are all of these things? And just kind of piles up to the point where now, how do you start when you have all that to do? And, you know, in the, in a world that has seven plus eight billion, however many billion people we have right now on the planet, uh, and we're so deeply connected you know, through social media, through the internet, uh, smartphones, we can see what people are doing all the time. And, and there's this, this tendency to actually compare what we're doing or seeing what other people are doing, thinking, oh, I need to do that too, or I need to do those things. Uh, or somebody started posting stuff on YouTube and then became famous or all this stuff that kind of gets piled on and something gets lost in all of these things that we have to do. And that is just the part that what we want to do and the part that makes us feel alive and the part that's actually the creativity, you know, stuff that you put up on, on YouTube or whatever, like this is going to be a podcast and it's going to be on YouTube and it's going to be in different places. And that's, that's cool. That's part of, of what this is, but you know, there's, there's gotta be something behind that in order to give this why to kind of keep going, to, to keep going. And when there's so many things to do, it's easy just to stop doing it or begin to start doing something for the wrong reason. You know, I want to get famous. I want to be able to make a living doing this. No, don't get me wrong. Making a living doing your creativity is not the wrong reason. It's a fantastic, it's a fantastic uh, thing to aim for, but it's also outside of your direct uh, sphere of, of action of what you can actually do. You can make music, you can write songs, you can record those songs, you can put them on SoundCloud, or you can send them to, you know, to 50 producers or several record companies or record labels. You can send them to publishers. You can, there are all these different things that you can do, but you can't, you know, you can't actually pay yourself to do it. So if you want to make if you want to make a good living doing it, that part's a little bit outside of the direct sphere of what you can actually actively do. And so I, I had a few conversations this week uh, with aspiring art. Well, not aspiring artists, actually artists who really do great work, but are feeling like they're stuck in some part of their journey. And actually, when I was talking to this one artist, one of the things that was interesting was she kept downplaying the songs that she had recorded that were not released. 
as though the one that was released was more valuable or that I would value her greater as an artist knowing about this particular song, this particular track that uh, had been released. And she kept bringing it up. And at some, a certain point I had to say, well, wait, how many other songs have you recorded? She said, oh, 10. And then she said, but only one has been released. Um, and I said, no, no, that, that's, that's not it. You're kind of downplaying this. And we have a tendency to do that with our work. And I do that too, right? My, my movie that was distributed by Universal uh, or the one that I did for, uh, for Columbia Pictures, uh, those things uh, you're going to see me talk about more in my, you know, when I'm talking about my career than maybe the one that I did that we serialized for a streaming service that collapsed. So no one's watching that movie anymore, right? But this other one was distributed by Universal, and this other one I made for Sony slash Columbia Pictures. So that is somehow more important. But actually, in my creative process, those things aren't more important. You know, that's a little bit more important for you to know that I have like been validated by somebody else who has deep pockets. But it doesn't actually tell you even who I am as an artist, because I'll tell you what, Sony Pictures made a lot of crappier movies than my movie that no one can see anymore because the platform that we made it for was, uh, you know, went bankrupt. So, um, you know, there's all these things we can do. And I think that the, the really what's important when there's so many different things that you can do. And now, like right now, it, we're in a pandemic and there are a million people trying to sell a billion people on their method or on their mindset uh, program or their their platform to get your work out there or whatever, right? There's so many, we're being bombarded with all these things and it's, oh my gosh, what can I do to take my creativity or my art and turn it from what it is right now into a way where I can thrive financially? And that can be really overwhelming, right? Because someone says it's all about Instagram and Instagram stories and someone else says, go make a course. And someone else says, throw it up on YouTube and start driving traffic there. And these are the ways and you should be blogging and you should be doing this. And you should be doing that. And it's like, wait, I can't do all of that stuff, you know? And I also still have these songs that nobody's ever heard because they haven't been released because I don't have a record company. I don't have a label behind me. And I don't have you know, and I'm not whatever the, you know, I don't have a, a, I don't have a producer. I don't have an agent or a manager. And now we're getting tied up in things that actually are divorced from what it is that you really love to do and the art that you do and your creativity. So as a songwriter, it is to write songs and then it is to record those songs and it could very well be to simply then just put them out in the world and then go make more. You know, uh, working in Hollywood, one of these things that comes up all the time that I've heard way too often is I had this great idea and somebody stole it. Uh, in a film festival that I that I ran, uh, the Wandering Real Traveling Film Festival, we had a short film that was about that was basically this guy documenting how uh, Spielberg stole the idea f uh, for a movie that was based on a children's book that his father wrote that I don't know if it was ever published or whatever. And it was this whole kind of thing. And I'm thinking, you know, uh, and he wanted to be a filmmaker and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, if you have an idea, only one idea, and it's the basket you put all of your eggs into, you're actually not an artist. You're not a creative, you know, because if you've got a whole library of songs, you think, oh, I don't want to record them putting them out because maybe I will get a deal later and that deal will ruin the opportunity for that song. Well, if you're a songwriter, the song that you wrote three years ago is three years ago. It's time to write something better. It's time to keep going. So you can put out that song, whatever you're writing today, put it out there, do the work continually to get better and do what is in front of you that you can do for your creative passion, for what it is that makes you feel alive, for sharing the work that you have created with whoever you can get it out to, and then go make more of it without saying, oh, there are all these other things that are holding me back. Nothing is holding you back. Nothing holds us back except ourselves. Now, that there obviously are two sides to that because if you, you know, we, we are communal creatures and we actually need others in order to come 
and help take us, you know, take our work out there. I don't, I make a movie and you, you see the, the list of credits is a mile long. Uh, even when I, uh, was, you know, recording, uh, when I recorded my very first single, uh, there were, we were the musicians and then we had an engineer and we had a producer and we had somebody else who was financing it. And then in order to do that, we had somebody else who designed the, that time it was a cassette tape. Uh, we had someone design the cassette, uh, tape, but somebody else took the photograph for the cassette tape. Um, and you know, the, the, the artwork and everything. So it's a communal effort. I get that. But at the same time, there's so much that actually is within our control, so much that we can do when we kind of go right back to the basics. If you're a writer, are you writing every day? Once you have a short story, to put it out there, if nobody wants to publish it, if it doesn't get into a major magazine, then, you, you know, put it out on your own. Uh, sell it to a few people, give it away. You know, almost like who cares? Because that just becomes something that you can do and you can throw out there and then you can, those become stepping stones to something else. But most importantly, it's actually actively engaging in the work. It's doing the work that you're here for. Because if you're not doing, if you're not doing it, then everything else is kind of a wish, a dream, an imagination, and it's not real. So with all the stuff that's going on right now, yes, we are in this COVID time where everybody's saying, hey, I've got the solution for you so that you can turn your art into money. You can market your things better. You can learn how to master social media. Those are all great and fine. But coming right back down to you're a creative, you're an artist, you're a musician, a filmmaker, a writer, a dancer, a painter, whatever it is, that's who you are. Do that work and put it out. We all want to see it. And last thing I'll say about that is when, when others see you doing the work, they want to work with you. They want to help you. They, they want that. They want to know that person is actually doing something always and they've got a great body of work that they're putting out there. Who cares if it's, you know, put out by, you know, Warner Chapel or, you know, or published by Penguin or whatever it is. What matters is that you're doing the work, you're doing the work that you love and you're sharing it. So there it is. Uh, let me know what you're doing this week. I want to know what you're doing this week, what you're creating. Uh, share it with me and let's stay in touch. I will see you next week. 